Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope you guys are having a good day. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World and the Black Business School. And um, one of you, uh, one of the things I, I hope you guys may may or may not know about me, if you don't know now, you know, um, I have a, a, a tremendous amount of respect uh, and regard for uh, my guest uh, today. Uh, his name is Dr. George Frazier, and he is, uh, in, among many things, uh, he's known as uh, one of the leading network, if not, if not the, in my opinion, he's the leading network guru in this country. Um, and uh, he's uh, an extraordinary human being, a great black man. Uh, he know he knows a lot of stuff, and he, he's done a lot of great work. And uh, he also runs the uh, the Fraser Net Power Networking Conference, and he, which 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 has now been transferred into Fraser Nation. And so, uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome my my friend, Dr. George Fraser. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. Good to see you, and uh, um, hopefully you have recovered uh, from the birth of a new nation. Um, and the Power Networking Conference, and it was just so good to have you back. And uh, man, uh, let me just repeat myself because I said this to you on, a, on a, some of our little VIP parties at the conference. Um, that town hall meeting that you participated in, we've had 18 town hall meetings, is probably the best town hall meeting we have ever had. I think it was because of the mix, the powerful mix of the five people that we had on that stage. You, um, uh, Dr. Michael Roberts, uh, Reverend Dr. Bustasores, uh, Wendy Muhammad, uh, Yannick Lawrence. It was just, I mean, what you said and how you said it, how you listened and how you process what you heard back and, 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 and put it back out in a different kind of way made it probably one of the richest in content. Uh, some of the, uh, we got over 200 um, uh, uh, testimonials from the conference and some incredible testimonials. And almost all of them men mentioned the national town hall meeting as one of their highlights. And one of the, yeah, and one of the things that uh, I do uh, after the conference is to, is to evaluate what were the top two, three, four, five moments of over a course of four, four days and 96 hours? Certainly the birth of Fraser Nation uh, was an incredible moment, a historic moment. And, I, and for me, second was the National Town Hall meeting um, and the subject matter that we talked about in, in, in terms of in the 21st century, where are the business opportunities that black folk can engage in and dominate? That was the operative term and dominate in the 21st century. Um, uh, and as I said, in the opening remarks of that town hall meeting, um, the East Indians did not call up Reverend Jesse Jackson and ask for permission to dominate the hotel industry. Uh, and over the last 20 years, they now dominate the hotel industry. The Koreans and Asians did not call up anybody, Al Sharpton or Jesse or me or you, and ask if they could dominate the beauty supply and nail care industry where we're 95% of the customers, right? They didn't ask for that. They just took it and now they dominated. Where were those opportunities? And so some very incredible, some in, in, in very in, interesting uh, conversation came out of that national town hall meeting. So let me, let me say this also about you. Um, and I've said this many times, greatness is excellence sustained over time. Greatness is excellence sustained over time. And uh, you have demonstrated excellence for as long as I have known you. Uh, stay that course and you are absolutely headed to greatness. You will be, uh, I know that you're less than 50 now, so you've got 32 really productive years left. But at the rate you're going, you will end up in the pantheon of great black people. I think uh, right along with the Dr. John Henry Clarks, with the uh, Dr. Amos Wilsons of the world, the Sheikh Conte Diops, the Chancellor Williams of the world. The, uh, so you, you're going to end up there in terms of the strategic, tactical, philosophical thinking uh, and straight no chaser thinking that you provide our community on a regular basis, man. So uh, it was I, I was giddy. 
uh, while you were at the conference, and I think you were a little giddy too. Um, but it was just uh, an incredible experience. And so I want to make an announcement. So I want to break some news here um, regarding Dr. Boyce Watkins and the Power Networking Conference going forward. Um, we have faculty, faculty members. We call all of our speakers faculty. We don't call them speakers. And there's a handful over the last 18 years that have earned tenure because they continue to offer extraordinarily powerful, useful, strategic, tactical content year after year after year. They're tenured. So I'm going to make an executive decision, and I mentioned this to you, to make you tenured faculty at the Power Networking Conference going forward. That would be like getting tenure at Harvard or tenure at Yale or tenure at Morehouse or tenure at Spelman, right? Um, and we want to make you a regular contributor of the conference by way of being a power speaker. And you know that if you're a power speaker, which is our version of TED Talks, right? Uh, we, except we call it big ideas that matter. Matter is the dog whistle word. Uh, black Lives Matter, right? For black people, what are the big ideas that matter for us? So with that 17 minute power talk, there is a one and a half hour workshop that that the each faculty member, selected faculty member, has a way to unpack this big idea and make available to those that run to their workshop ways in which they can extend their relationship with our faculty member beyond the four days of the workshop. This is not just a slam bam, thank you, ma'am. And it's not just get inspired, get motivated, and now what? people who are turned on and turned up by what you say, we know that each of these faculty members has a way that they can continue the connection over time. And I think your Black Entrepreneurial Institute uh, is the best of its kind, certainly for us, on the internet today. I, I just not have seen um, such excellence in the delivery of services using and leveraging technology the, with, with what you've done with the Black Entrepreneurial Institute. So we are going to make that a part of Fraser Nation. That will be one of the major offerings for all of our citizens going forward. When people are looking for advice and counsel and a system and a process by which to engage in the myriad of subjects in which you, you make available to folks online from wealth building to uh, entrepreneurial uh, endeavors, that's going to be that, uh, that is going to be the, the place that we're going to send them. So I just wanted to make that announcement live and in living color. It's the first time I said that publicly. Um, but uh, uh, that's what I, and that's how I feel about you. And uh, I love you, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep saying what you're saying. Be provocative. Uh, be innovative. Be Continue to be creative. And most importantly, uh, continue to do something about it. Don't just talk about it. And that's, that's I think that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's the unique thing that you bring to the table. There's no question about it. Wow. Well, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm humbled and honored. And, uh, and everybody, you know, who's watching, um, uh, I, I hope that you know about Dr. George Frazier. If you don't, uh, make sure you go Google him um, because he's done extraordinary work. <clears throat> I, I have a lot of respect for him. And, uh, you know, he, he represents uh, what I call one of the tent poles in our community in terms of strong uh, men and women that we can look to uh, that literally are providing uh, the kind of guidance and the kind of blueprint that is going to make black people great again it, to use to, to steal to, to steal Trump's term. Uh, you know, we are uh, we are the original man. We are uh, we have something in our DNA that makes us very, very special. Um, and, uh, and if you went to the uh, the FraserNet conference uh, this past uh, this past year or, or a couple about uh, three or four weeks ago in Houston, 
Uh, one of the things that you may have noticed, and I'm asked Dr. Frazier, I'd love for you to expound on this, is that there is an understanding that a lot of us, in order for us to uh, move forward, we've got to do go where I what I call black to the future, meaning that uh, we've got to go to our past to figure out how we're going to move forward. You know, uh, and that means uh, two things. One, uh, going back, say, to 1920, when our ancestors owned 15 times more land than <laughs> we do today, right? We traded our land in for student loans you know, <laughs> and our assets in for jobs. And uh, we're realizing that that wasn't necessarily the best move per se, that uh, we can learn from our ancestors who did seem to do more with far less. The other uh, thing, and you you made this really big at the conference, and that's what I love, is you actually had a, a strong um, uh, a, a strong connection slash commitment to uh, reconnecting to the continent of Africa, mm-hmm. uh, that doing business, uh, you know, in the motherland with the people that look like us, with the people that are connected to us, uh, in, you know, in blood, that that's really important, right? That that's really important for us to, as a nation, uh, as an independent nation, Fraser Nation and, and the Black Nation as well, to, you know, send delegations to Africa, really learn what it takes mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, obtain assets there, do business there, make connections there. Can you kind of speak to some of that? Yeah. Um, uh, Ambassador Arikana um, uh, Shambore did an incredible job. She joined us at the conferences, as you well know, uh, from the African Union. And she spoke to that very powerfully. And in essence, she said that there's, there's no way that Africa is going to maximize its full human potential and the natural resources that God has given the, this continent, the richest to natural resources in the world, its full potential without connecting with African people in the diaspora, in particular African people in America because of the resources that they bring to the table, of the intellectual capital that they bring to the table, the human capital that they bring to the table, that that, both the intellectual and human capital is absolutely necessary for the development of the continent. So if we go back to the town hall meeting, we, we talked about to some extent, if there is a place that we want to dominate, where we can dominate, where we're welcomed to dominate, where there is a whole continent of people who look like us, that certainly would provide us prima facie opportunity, unlimited opportunity in every category that we could possibly imagine. So that connection is an important part of the Fraser Nation connection. We cannot do it without establishing links and bonds and relationships and networking and connecting the dots within the continent. When you look at what the potential is and you look at um, other nationalities like the Chinese uh, and the Indians who are populating this content specifically for the reason of accessing those natural resources, helping them and funding building infrastructures so they can remove those resources easily, right? Um, So we have to man up and woman up and we have to establish that connection. And we, we placed a lot of emphasis on that. When you look at the Fraser Nation flag, and we, and, and Fraser Nation not only has a preamble, it not only has uh, a, 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 a declaration of interdependence, it not only has uh, a constitution, right? We have, we were bold enough, I'm gonna pull it out here, we were bold enough to design our own flag, but the point I'm trying to make is you'll notice on the flag that Fraser Nation, the F, is inside of the continent of Africa, right? Mm. That's where we are. That's where we, we are, right? And F really, really is 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 what. And you notice that the, there's water around the continent. And what that simply says is that we're all connected. People in the African diaspora are connected by water, and it was navigating these oceans in such a painful way that connects us and was part of the Middle Passage. So we we cannot get where we want to go 
without connecting with those in the diaspora. The resources are tremendous. And uh, the response to this idea um, was overwhelming. And remember, Fraser Nation is not a membership organization. We are a citizenship-based organization. Fraser Net, for 32 years, was a membership organization where you connect, grow, and prosper. And we ask you to join our network. And over 100,000 people joined the Fraser Net network and then utilize the principles that we espouse for proper networking within the context of our network. Well, not that we have trashed Fraser Nation, Annette, but we are morphing now into Fraser Nation, citizens of generational wealth, where people are now committed to demonstrated excellence, equity and investment, and entrepreneurial thinking. I didn't say entrepreneurship. I said entrepreneurial thinking. That means taking risks, taking responsibility, and taking ownership for our own lives. So this is a bigger picture. It includes globally those in the diaspora. The motherland is a significant part of it. And the excellence, because if you wanted to reduce Fraser Nation to uh, just a simple one-liner, uh, we are a portal an incubator for black excellence. And the citizens who join our nation, who become a part of our nation, are committed to demonstrated excellence, equity investment, and entrepreneurial thinking, right? So it's a bigger vision, a bigger tent, if you will. Well, maybe if we think about it deeply, maybe it's a smaller tent, because I'm not sure all of us are committed to demonstrated excellence, right? But the only way you're going to become a citizen of our nation is if, in fact, you proclaim and you articulate and in your immigration process for becoming a citizen of our nation, you articulate how you have demonstrated excellence. Now, how are you talking about excellence? How have you demonstrated it? Mm. Well, you know, I, I like that a lot. Um, you know, the talk versus action thing. You know, I, I, um, I, I don't really. Uh, I'm not impressed with big talk, or and I'm, I'm modestly impressed with big ideas, but I, I, I'm probably more impressed with with little little steps, little action. You know, small amount. You know, just do the little things. Show me that you're doing the little things, and then I'll believe you when you come talk to me about the big things. Because a lot of us do a whole lot of big talk, and and nothing comes out of that. And um, and I think that's a mistake. I think that's something we have to pay attention to. Um, I, I hope that that doesn't um, continue to get pushed in our culture because there's a whole lot of people I see, you know, that feel that if we do a lot of talking, that that's the same as actually doing things. And it's not the same. Um, and so uh, everybody who just came in, I want you guys to know who I'm talking to. I'm speaking with Dr. George Frazier. He's the founder of Frazier Nation. Uh, he, he was also the founder of Frazier Net. Uh, and he's made a transition into that. And he's... Um, uh, he's, he's a great brother and he, he has a conference every every year. Uh, you guys should look this up. And uh, also, um, I want to remind everybody uh, to hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, subscribe button and all that good stuff. So other people can see this interview. Please take a second, hit the thumbs up button. Also, uh, Friday, if you're interested in learning how to uh, become a real estate investor, multifamily property, things like that. We're having a special event in the Black Business School uh, hosted by Julian Gordon, our Dean of Entrepreneurship, who is going to teach you how he became the owner of rental property. So if you're interested, go sign up at TheEmancipationEquation.com. Somebody type that in, please. It's the, T-H-E, TheEmancipationEquation.com. So, Dr. Frazier, I'd like to ask you this question, sir. Um, you know, uh, I have really... One growth area for me that was actually driven by you um, is learning the power of networking and, and coming together. You know, you have you have a great saying that you that I've, that I've heard you, you you mentioned, and I've repeated this actually, where you say we we got everything we need but us, uh, and, uh, and and I think that is a powerful statement because we know that from you know when you look at the key components that form you know great economies. It all comes from people coming together. That's what makes an economy strong. You know, um, black wealth could literally increase by ten trillion dollars in a year if we were, you know, spending more money with black businesses, bouncing our dollars around. If you bounce a dollar around ten times in your community, it becomes ten dollars. 
So, so that 1.2 trillion a year, if it's bounced around, you know, three times, that's that's now 3.6 trillion a year, right? You know, and and so um, what you said about you know bring us coming together and committing ourselves to that really took me down a long rabbit hole of of thought about first of all my mistakes in terms of how I'm not wiring in the way that I should. Uh, also, um, other things that I think as a community that we can work on and learn, even in basic areas like like getting along with your brother. If you if you're doing business and you have a dispute, how do you handle the dispute so you stay together instead of you know going in different directions? Uh, getting married. Marriage is a huge empire builder if you do it right. But if you can't handle disputes and conflicts, then you, it becomes divorce, which becomes a wealth eater, right? Uh, and so so just thinking about all these things. Um, I'd like to ask you a question. It's going to be open-ended because I, I'm sure everything I've said has, has sparked a million thoughts in your head. You're a smart man. I'm <laughs> yeah. Whatever the you want to go. Um, but if, if, I'm, if I'm committed to this idea of coming together and I want to come together with people that can make me better, people that can make me wealthier, people that can help me move forward in my life, um, what are some steps that, that I can take right now to, uh, to, to improve myself in that area? Yeah. Um, boy, you said a mouthful, and you're right. I, as you were speaking, there were a million thoughts going on in my mind. One of the thoughts when you put your hands together like this one was, and I said this at the conference, think about this deeply regarding our Jewish brothers and sisters. There are only 15 million Jews in the entire world. 15 million Jews in the entire world, Google it. But they control about 9% of the $400 trillion of global wealth. The reason is because they're like this. They're like this. There are 1.3 billion people of African descent throughout the diaspora. The majority of them are on the continent. We control less than 1% of the $400 trillion of global wealth. And so you ask, why is that, Dr. Fraser? Because we are like this. They are like this. Let me say that differently. <clears throat> it is easy to break a finger. It is hard to break a fist. The strength is not in the wolf. The strength is in the pack. There's a beautiful African proverb, it's Ghanaian. When spiders unite, they can tie up a lion. Mm. So once we internalize this and move out of our silos, because we're operating in silos, some of it is the result of our woundedness, which has led to distrust of each other because we've been taught that, read the Willie Lynch letter, right? Mm. Um, and once we get out of our silos and think strategic alliances, joint ventures and partnerships, we will begin to become a force that this world will have to reckon with. Now, <clears throat> Our slave masters understood this 400 years ago. And that's why their objective was to erase our memory and to divide and ultimately conquer us, right? But we're slowly but surely coming back together with the kind of ongoing conversation, advice and counsel and the delivery of subject matter expertise that will bring us back together. It's still going to take us another three to five generations, but we're moving in that direction. Now, you've heard me say this a million times, black people have every single thing they need to succeed except each other. Jews have each other. East Indians have each other. Arabs have each other, right? We don't have each other. But collectively, we are a $1.2, $1.3 trillion annual economy. If we were a nation, we'd be the 14th richest nation in the entire world. I'm talking about Black folks in America. 
There's over 500 billion hours of formal education and professional training from just one generation alone, baby boomers. 500 trillion, 500 billion hours of formal education and professional training. If you wanted to put a dollar value on that, it's just 10 bucks an hour, right? And that's conservative. Try to get professional training and education for 10 bucks an hour. That would mean that our collective intellectual capital base just among one generation alone, baby boomers, is worth in excess of $5 trillion, right? Mm -hmm. So we have brain power and we have money, but we are still at the bottom of every economic statistic that matters in America 400 years later, right? Because we are financially illiterate and because of the psychological and internal problems we have in working with and through and trusting and loving each other, it has disrupted our ability to connect. And connection comes through trust. And building those relationships comes through, that's a skill. You're not necessarily, that's not in your DNA. You learn that. You learn that there are three kinds of networks that you're going to have to work on through every passage of your life, that you actually never stop building relationships, never stop networking. And I said passage because each passage is about 10 years, Dr. Watkins. Um, we get about eight passages in life, if you think about it deeply, if you're lucky. Black men, the average black man dies at 72, so he would be in his eighth passage when he died. Now I'm 74, so I'm living on two years of Jesus time right now. I'm two years over the average death rate of, of the black male in America. Black women live a little bit longer, but they still don't live as long as, as white women do. All right. Um, and, and, and so, uh, well, let me, let me unpack this idea of passage. You're a different person at 10 years old than you were at one. You're a different person at 20 than you were at 10. Let us pray. You're a different person at 30 than 20. You're a different person at 40 than 30, 50 than 40, 60 than 50, 70 than 60, 80 than 70. You're constantly evolving, growing, and changing. Let us pray. So every passage of your life, you're working on cultivating, nurturing, and building relationships. Actually, I wrote a children's book about how to begin the process of building relationships with young children in your circle and to understand that it takes teamwork to make the dream work. The book is called Who Would Have Thunk It? The First Adventure of the Fraser Foster Kids. But it's really about networking in the first passage of your life, right? So through every passage of your life, you're cultivating, nurturing, and building relationships. People are coming in and out of your life. There are only a handful of people, maybe on one hand, that have been with you through every passage of your life. There are only two people in my life who have been with me all 74 years of my life. Actually, one, my sister, no one else on earth is living that have been with me through all 74 years, through the orphanage years, through the foster care years, through my productive years, through my school years, through my screw up years. Right, My sister is the only person that has been through every eight passages of my life. So you need three networks that you have to work on. First is your personal network. These are your close circle of friends. These are the people you know, you respect, that you love. Right? These are the people that cheer you on and lift you up. Let's call that your network at home. That's your personal network. And that is through every passage of life. Most of these people do not pl platoon in and out of your life. This is family. Let's call it family. That's the personal network. The second network is what I call your operational network. These are the people that help you to get specific tasks done in life through each passage of life. Whether it's where you are working in your current place of business whether you're on the deacon board at your church or whether you're on the United Negro College Fund fundraising uh, board or, or, or campaign 20 years ago, there are people that come in and out of your life that help you to get specific things done and you help them to get specific things done. That's your operational network. 
working on them all through life. People change. They platoon in and out. Right, the people I still know, love, and respect. They're not in my life, but they help me to get things done in my life. And then the final network is your strategic network. These are the people that are smarter than you. These are the people that are where you want to be. These are the people that will drag you into the 21st century, kicking, screaming, and crying. These are the people that ultimately can end up being your mentor, your coach. They can train you or teach you something that you don't know. This is your strategic network. If you're the smartest person in your network, you're in the wrong damn network. You don't ever want to be the smartest person in your network. Why? Because you can't grow. Who is reaching down and lifting you up, right? So you need to be around people who are also smarter than you so you can learn and grow from them. So in essence... You have to collect people throughout your life. Uh, and now I learned that term from a lady who said this to me at the Power Networking Conference. She said, you know, Dr. Fraser, I've been studying you and following you for 25 years. And she said, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, Dr. Fraser, but you, do you know that you collect people? I said, I, I said, wow, I never heard that before. No one ever put it in that terms. I said, but let me think about that. And so we were standing there talking, you know, as, we, as all of the faculty members do with all of our, our, our attendees every, every year. And I said, well, that's, that's a very interesting perspective. Because if you think about collecting people, you think about collections. They're things that we collect in life. And then they're things that we trash right? The things that we collect are the valuable things, the unique things. We show them off, right? We gather around them. We take care of them. So I said, I like what you said. Yeah, maybe I do collect people and maybe that's a good approach or good metaphor that, that we all need to think about. How do we collect people that, of course, you don't always in, in any collection that you have, you're not always using every piece of that collection. There's certain things that you take out of that collection that you use at an appropriate time. So this is the mistake that too many of us are making. We are disposing in a negative way. We're burning bridges. Let's put it that way. You should never burn bridges. You never know when you're going to have to go over that bridge. Even when you have a, a difference with a person, even if they screw something up or you screw something up, don't burn the bridge. Bless it and release it. Try to understand it. Extract a lesson from that, right? So how do you collect people, Dr. Fraser? Um, there are habits that you have to develop. And um, I learned this when about 15 years ago in a speech that I gave, there was a Q&A period. And a lady stood up and said, Dr. Fraser, you are a masterful networker. You've written books on this. What is it that you do every day that allows you to do that? I said, you know what? That's a very interesting question. I don't really know. I'm going to have to think about that. Now, you know why I didn't know, Dr. Boyce? Because I had habitualized it. So it's like, First, learning how to ride a bicycle. There's certain steps that your parents take you through, right, to learn how to ride a bicycle. And you practice those steps. You practice getting on. You practice shifting your weight, right? And then you learn how to ride a bicycle. And then you ride the bicycle. And you do that effortlessly. And then as you get really good at it. You just get on the bicycle and ride. You don't even think about what you have to do to ride the bicycle but because you have habitualized the steps necessary to teach you that particular skill. Well, the same had happened to me. There are five or six things I do every single day, 365 days a year that have habitualized my ability to collect people and to build effective relationships with people and to serve them and to add value to them in life. Um, so what are those, what are those five or six things? There is no day 
365 days a year, including all holidays, that I don't make at least five phone calls a day, at least generally more to family and old friends. There's no day, right? Um, uh, And we all have family and old friends. Now, I have to be transparent here. You have to manage that because if you don't manage that, you could spend half your day talking to family and old friends, all right? So you might get a phone call from me, Dr. Boyce, it goes something like this. (laughs) And I say it with a smile on my voice. Hey, Dr. Watkins, I'm on my way to California, and I'm about to get on the plane, and I was thinking about you, and I just wanted to touch base to see how you were doing. How's mom and them, or, you know, whatever whatever you want to say. Now, what have I done? I've set the parameters for the amount of time we're going to spend together, okay? (laughs) Right? Because you can spend your whole day, you know, catch it up, right? So there's no day that I don't talk to at least five friends, uh, old friends, uh, and family members Mm. every single day. Number two, there's no day I do not talk to new people that I have met, collected their business cards, and I'm going through my follow-up process. By the way, um, the story I tell all the time is in 32 years, I've given out 31 thousand business cards and people used to say dr fraser aren't you worried about giving so many business cards out to people now i don't hand them out willy-nilly no i just meet people and they ask me for a card and i give them a card i said no i never worry about that you know why because i've learned at 74 years old that 99.99999 percent of the people i give a business card to will never ever follow up and they just got a card from america's networking guru and they still don't follow Right. The the fortune is in the follow up. Right. So there's no one who's ever given me a business card, generally speaking, that I haven't followed up one way or another. So that's part of the habit that I have created every single day. These business cards that I compile, I follow up. It might mean a phone call. It might mean an email. It might mean a text message, but it's, hey, how you doing? It was great to have met you. If there's any way I could help you, you know, please contact me. But I follow up. So five, at least five a day, right? The five phone calls I make every single day to somebody I sold something to. Mm. But I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just trying to see how in the hell are you, uh, right? Well, what I sold you, was it useful? Is there anything else I can help you with? And how's the family and uh, what's happening? And you know, Those kinds of things. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just trying to establish a rapport and the relationship beyond the time that I need to sell them something. Because that's one of the biggest complaints that people have when you sell them something. The only time I hear from your black ass is when you're trying to sell me something. <laughs> right? Right? So five phone calls a day to people I've sold things to, right? But I ain't trying to sell them anything. Five emails or handwritten messages. And these are minimums now, Dr. Watkins. Every single day to new people in my network. Now, this used to be more difficult because remember, I've been at this about 40 years. So this was before the internet. So I used to do handwritten notes. I remember when I met um, Earl Graves, he was one of the people I wanted to meet in life, the founder of Black Enterprise Magazine. And I met him and it's a whole long story. I don't want to get into it. This is already long. but I, 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 I have a special car with my name on it. I have a special fountain pen that I use, right, to, to write special notes. And I wrote a nice handwritten note. There was an article in the New York Times about Earl Graves. I, caught, I pulled that article out, folded it up, put it in the note, and sent it to Earl Graves, right? I said, hey, I just read something about you. You may need an extra copy of this, but this it was a great article, right? So a handwritten note was what I used to do. Now I do that occasionally, depending on special relationships, but with the internet today, with text messaging today, messaging today, that's very easy. It's a lot easier to do, all right? So at least five of those 
every single day. The final thing that I do is the most important thing that I do. That when you look at the cumulative effects of this one thing that I do every single day and have done it for years and years and years, it is probably the reason you and I are having this conversation and probably the underlying reason for whatever success I've experienced in life. Every single day, I introduce five people to five new people they need to know. Interesting. Every day. I connect. Now, this is really easy with the internet. I do uh, email introductions. Hey, Dr. Watkins, I really think you need to know Dr. Michael Roberts, or you need to know Dr. Randall Pinkett. He might be an interesting uh, subject for your show, right? That, that kind of thing, right? Uh, and the results of introducing people to people that add value to their life and it's reciprocal, the, the benefits that I have accrued from that, the goodwill that I have accrued from that, the tangible uh, results of that um, has been profound. Wow. There's no wow. way that I don't do that. And then of course today, there is no day that I don't spend at least an hour, maybe two hours on social media. Mm. LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Now, what are you doing spending two hours of your life, Dr. Fraser, on social media? I'm looking for content. I'm looking to, to pop in on Dr. Boyce and to hear what he's talking about today. I'm looking for content that I think is relevant and I can share. And that's so easy today. Because when you are sharing content, things that you find fascinating, interesting, advice, right, that you can give people that's quick and in a hurry, people remember you. you what are you doing? You're adding value to your, their life. They remember you. So I have 100,000 people that follow me because they are going to my different sites and they're looking for provocative and interesting content. I've sent them content that you sent me or I've seen you post. I've seen stuff that you said, little clips that you said. I said, yo, check Dr. Dr. Watkins out. This is, this is true, right? He's straight, no chaser. And, and it'll be a short little clip, right? So I'm looking for content so I can share powerful information that adds value to people's lives. I don't have all the content. Yes, I post something provocative every damn day. No question about that. But I don't have all the information. I don't have all the knowledge. There's some brilliant stuff out here that our people need to know and understand and understand that I'm not the only one saying it. Dr. Boyce is not the only one saying it. Conscious and woke people are not the only one saying it. There are other people who are saying these things. They may be saying it differently, but they're saying, in essence, the same thing. Wow. So that's how I do it. And these are habitualized. Dr. Dr. Boyce, I don't even think about them. I just automatically do them. I carve out the time. There's 24 hours. I carve out the time to get those things done every day. Wow. Everybody who just tuned in, um, I hope you guys appreciate the value of what's being given to you right now. When they say they're given the game for free, um, Dr. Frazier is, uh, is, is he, as he mentioned, and I, and I agree 100%, he is America's leading networking guru. And he just gave you five rules that can be applied to your life that will add tremendous value to your ability to achieve your goals. I mean, I, I took notes. I took notes. And, and I, I wish I could say I was taking notes so I could recite it to other people. But I'm taking notes for myself because I, you know, I, your, your ability to um, bring people together. Uh, is, is extraordinary. Um, I also noticed this, and this is going to lead to my last questions. I know you got a busy day uh, in front of you, but um, oh, I'm having fun, man. I'm having fun. This is great. Right. Well, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving this too. Um, and I hope everybody else is. I hope that you'll say something in the chat to uh, uh, show your appreciation. Um, one thing I noticed that you do that I think is, is brilliant. And I, and I, I remember learning some of that from you back actually in 2006. Uh, I remember listening, I remember your speeches in, in 2006 uh, when I went to uh, your, your Frasier Net conference then as well. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I noticed that you do is, is you, 
you you not you you add value and you lead with love. You um, <clears throat> you don't make the mistake a lot of people make, which is okay. I just met this millionaire or or billionaire. I'm, I'm going to ask for something, right? Which which people can smell that coming from a mile away. Uh, you lead with love. Uh, you lead with uh, support. You lead with adding value. And uh, and and that just knocks down so many barriers. And I'd like for you to address that. And also, I'd love to get. I was really touched by your your story with your sister. You know, and and the years in foster care and and uh, in the orphanage and things like that. I mean, it really it almost brought tears to my eyes because I thought about my own sister. And and I I was in your. That's why I went up and said something to your sister at the conference because right. because there was something about that story where I stepped into that experience and I felt right. it. You know, right. and people locate uh, themselves in your story. So you locate it yourself in that story, right? This is the, this is the power of stories. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, it just blew me away, and I, I, I was curious to know if you if you feel that um, the experience that you had, you know, with the orphanage and with foster care, played a role in your ability to network so well. Because I, I have another friend who, you know, kind of had you know a tough family situation growing up. You know, she kind of lived in different places, house to house. And I remember her mentioning to me that one of the ways that she learned to survive was by coming into that environment, figuring out what was what, who was who, and, and how to get what she needed, and how and, and how to understand the personalities in that room and connect with people, that that was a survival skill for her. Do you feel that that experience played a role in shaping you into the man that you are today? Or in, in, in what yeah. way? Damn, Dr. Boyce, you snatched the damn thought right out of my brain. <laughs> right? You could be on this side, right? And, and you, just, you just took the whole damn thing. That is, that is exactly right. Exactly, precisely. You learn survival skills. And you also learn, this is, this is a little secret, and I'm so glad you said it because um, it is profoundly true. When you're in an orphanage or when you are in foster care, my sister and I aged out of orphanages and foster care. My mother became mentally ill uh, when I was three. My sister's a year older than I am. And, um, and from a family of 11, eight boys and three girls, my father was a cab driver. He couldn't take care of 11 children. So we were put into an orphanage and then broken up into threes because nobody would take 11 children and then spent the balance of our young lives in foster care. But what you learn in those environments are exactly that, survival skills. You learn survival skills and you, you learn for ways to be loved. You're not going to get the kind of love as a baby in an orphanage that you really need, the kind of love and nurturing that you really need. You're not going to get that in foster care. Fundamentally, too many foster parents, and, I, and I'm not hating on foster care. I'm a huge proponent of foster care, and I'm evidence of what foster care can produce. Um, but there are too many foster parents who are just in it for the money, right? And mm -hmm. so the love, the sincere love and nurturing is not there. So you learn how to, how to solicit that love and to solicit that care. And you learn it by demonstrating warm and fuzzy and good people skills. You learn to say the right things, to smile. You learn to do things that make your uh, non-biological parents happy and hug you and say, at a girl and at a boy. Uh, in other words, you develop a very high emotional intelligence. Wow. Right? wow. Now, this is deep. Now, this is deep. Right? The, you, you develop a very high emotional intelligence intelligence. In other words, and I say this all the time to, to our people, uh, as you get older and wiser, you're going to find out that your EQ will be more important than your IQ, right? There are a lot of smart people out here. Make no mistake about that. 
but your ability, which is emotional intelligence, to manage the five most important emotions in your body and use the management of those emotions to cultivate, nurture, and to build relationships with other people is the critical thing. Is at, at the end of the day, right? People, people will do for people that they know, like, and respect, right? But like, they got, people have to like you, right? And it's very, very important. So you spend a lot of time in orphanages and foster cares trying to get people to like you so that you can eat better. Wow. So that you can go out and play so that your ass isn't whooped for every mistake that you make because you ain't theirs, right? These are survival skills that you learn organically. Now, I would not have described this 50 years ago as emotional intelligence, but when I look back on it, right, that's exactly what it was. These were survival skills, people skills. And so that's how I processed that. And I applied those skills to every job I ever had in life, including the three years I spent mopping floors on the midnight shift at LaGuardia Airport, right? And, and, and if you were to go to LaGuardia Airport and go down into the maintenance department, there's a plaque on the wall. I'm on the plaque, all right? I was the best floor mopper in the history of LaGuardia Airport. Not so much because I, I was technically the best floor mopper, but I was a good floor mopper, but extremely well liked. Do you understand the combination there? I had some skills. I couldn't mess up some floors and still be well liked, but I applied the skills that I learned in the training on how to mop floors, right? I would say I was better, probably better than average, but most importantly, people liked me. They liked me because I made them smile. I had a good sense of humor. I had a good attitude about the work that I was doing. So I would win all the awards, not necessarily for my skills, although I had decent skills, but because I was, let's call it, Mr. Personality. Where did I learn that from, right? I wasn't reading any books on how to do that. I, those were survival skills that we developed in orphanages and foster care, which tend to be not as loving and as nurturing and knowing that we needed that to fully develop as a human being, right? Mm -hmm. um, we developed the skills to secure that. And those skills have followed me through every passage of my life. Right. In my high school, I wasn't the smartest. I was a C student in Thomas Edison High School. I graduated with a vocational diploma in carpentry. I was a carpenter who couldn't get a job in carpentry in New York because the Italians controlled the union. And so we couldn't get a job. And that's why I was relegated to dry, uh, mopping floors. Right. But what I could get, I maximized the potential of it and developed relationships and collected friendships. And that won me not only admiration and raises and opportunities and the ability to supervise people, because when you have high emotional intelligence, you have the ability to identify excellence, you have the ability to motivate excellence, to inspire people, to, 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 to gather people around you. People want to be around that kind of personality. They don't want you to be just smart and mean as hell. They want, they, you know, your, your interpersonal and people skills are critical. So that, so orphanages and foster care in search of love and in search of nurturing uh, helped me to develop my EQ, my emotional intelligence at a very early age. So you, you, you're very observant. You're very, very observant. Um, and you're exactly right. You lead with love. You lead with two things if you observe me. I always lead with love. I try to do it in a non-sappy way. I, sometimes I'll do it with humor. Sometimes I'll do it with a story. 
Sometimes I'll do it with your story. I'll bring out a story. And of course, I'm this guy that I never let facts get in the way of a great story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never let facts get in the way of a great story. Um, so I don't have to be a thousand percent factual. I just have to be close. Right. So I leave with stories. I understand that the most sacred and the most beautiful word on earth is your name. Mm. Is your name. Wow. Hearing your wow. name is that, 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 when you hear your name, your brain squirts a little dopamine <laughs> on you and makes you feel good when you hear your name. So I lead with the person's name. And um, I understand very clearly that the, the first and foremost principle of effective networking, because we most of us are networking the wrong way. We're networking to get something wrong your network to give and as you give you get if you ain't giving you ain't getting if you have nothing it's because you've given nothing that you cannot take out of life that which you have not put into life is you cannot take out of the bank that which you have not put into the bank so it's all about giving we are we're networking to get wrong you give every person i meet i'm in a contest with them i never tell them the contest if you ever watch me uh, uh you ever watch me uh have a conversation with a new person it's about 10 minutes long Eight minutes is about them. Two minutes is about me. You'll ask me a question. I'll answer the question succinctly and artfully turn the conversation on you. Why? Because I'm trying to find out more about you and I'm asking you questions and I'm going through my mental Rolodex of assets that I have and I'm trying to find a way to give you something as fast as I can because I believe that the first person that gives wins. Mm. Wow. First person that gives wins. Right? Now, uh, now you never give to get. I wrote this in Click, 10 Truths for Building Extraordinary Relationship. You never give to get. But understand, this is biblical, <clears throat> that you cannot give without getting. It's impossible. You cannot give. Now, I might not get it directly back from you, but I'm depositing in the bank of giving, and that it all, when it's all said and done, it's coming back. This is what I tell people about, <clears throat> you want credit? If you want credit, if you want recognition, give it all away. If you want recognition, give it all away. If you're leading a team and you want to be recognized for the leadership of that team, give the team all the credit. Mm -hmm. give, give them all the credit. And really, that's not BS. That's real. I mean, really, you are the conductor of the team. I tell people all the time, because you're on a team doesn't mean that you're on a winning team. <laughs> the job of a leader is the winning team. Is everybody on your team the best at what they do? And they are contributing like a great conductor conducting an orchestra. He can't play the damn violin. He can't play the cello. He can't play the timpani. But he has to put together an aggregate, a group who can each play each instrument the best. He writes the music and conducts it so that it all sounds beautiful. That's what you and I do. We are conductors, right? We have the ability to try to find and pick the right person. And then we give them the love and the inspiration and the environment and the fertilizer, right? And the processes and the systems, even if they're just average, you give them the systems to make them brilliant. That's what we do. And then you give them all the credit. And it's impossible <clears throat> to give away all the credit and not some of the credit back come back to you. So you want to get recognized, you want to be loved, give away the love. Wow. You want to get credit, give away all the credit. Well, that's, that makes that's, sense. Yes, it does. That is excellent. Right. Everybody, please um, make a comment mm -hmm. in the chat and uh, it, please express to this this amazing man uh, your appreciation for uh, what he has taught us today. Uh, this has been uh, this has been teaching, preaching, and everything else that we need uh, to move forward. If you did not take notes, um, I want you to go back and watch this video from the beginning. And I need you to take notes because this was a class. Yeah, okay. I see. I see some people are already thanking you, Dr. Frazier, because they they're mentioning what I'm thinking. These are jewels. This is extraordinary. Um, and uh, let me ask you this, Dr. Frazier: What is a, a website uh, that people can go to if they want to support you or follow you, things like that? Sure. Two. 
First, if you want to come to the Power Network Conference next year where Dr. Boyce Watkins will be interviewed. Remember how I interviewed Damon? Yeah. Well, you're going to be in that seat next year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're going to be in that seat next year. Uh, were you there for the Damon John interview? I did not make that. I had to go to uh, New Orleans. Uh, so okay, I you're right, 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 right. Well, that was a that was an incredible interview. Um, but you're going to be in that seat next year. I'll be interviewing you. You're the one that typically does the interviewing, but 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 we're going to switch we're going to switch it up on you. Right. Uh, and and so Dr. Boyce Watkins will be featured at the conference next year. If you're interested in the Power Networking Conference 2020, where excellence, um, collaboration. Uh, will equal uh, our independence, interdependence, because we're working now on interdependence. I didn't say independence, I said interdependence. We wrote a declaration of interdependence, not a declaration of independence. We have to act interdependently. If you want to be at that conference, a special offer is on that conference. I had my, my web people do a special offer right now for anyone smart enough watching you now, powernetworkingconference.com, powernetworkingconference.com. The conference typically is $1,495. There's a special offer on the website right now if you're interested in coming to the conference, June 11th, June 8th through the, wrong, July 8th through the 11th, July 8th through the 11th, 2020. If you want to go to the Power Networking Conference, you can get a special offer. It's reduced from $1,495 to $499 for you and a college-age student, 18 to 25. Two people, you, one adult, and a college-age student. Normally, it's $1,495 for one adult and $795 for one student. That's usually what it is. It's 2,200 bucks to come to our conference. We sell it out every year. Mm. Right now, you can get that package for $499. It's on the site now. We changed the site <clears throat> right before I came on. You can take advantage of that. That's number one. Number two, if you're interested in getting more information about Fraser Nation, citizens of generational wealth, where you are committed to demonstrated excellence, equity and investment and entrepreneurial thinking. If you want to be, if you want to apply, I make this be clear, you want to apply for citizenship of our nation. I want you to email me, gfraser at frasernet.com, gfraser, F-R-A-S-E-R at frasernet.com. And I will send you a the, the beautiful brochure. This is what it looks like. The beautiful brochure of Fraser Nation. This is the brochure. Beautiful. Did you get one, Doc? Uh, yes. You get I, one? Oh, yes. Uh, Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. All the information, everything. And then there's a citizenship application right here. Right? I want to, I want to send you an electronic version of this so that you can read all about our preamble, our declaration of interdependence, and our constitution with 14 articles. And if you're interested in applying for citizenship, that you have to qualify, um, you can do that. So if you're interested in that, G. Fraser at FraserNet. Dot com. That's F-R-A-S-E-R-N-E-T. And you can get all the information you want about Fraser. Net. Now, if you're following me on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, this information is posted. I'm going to have to go into one of those and scroll down, but it's already posted on my social media stuff. But if you want it personally, turn page technology, then... I'll be more than happy to send that to you. Make sure that your name is there, your cell number, your cell number, and we can go from there. All right. So I'll repeat that information to everybody so you guys can uh, have it. Uh, if you'll type it in, I'd appreciate that. Uh, the website for the Power Networking Conference, which I can vouch for. Um, I, I've been there you know, uh, two times now. And, um, and the thing that makes me want to go um, is you know, I, I, I get to go for free, you know, because of the relationship, things like that. But I would pay 
I would pay thousands of dollars to go to this conference because there aren't that many places you can go uh, as a black professional and network with black people like that. Um, you know, most of the time when I go to uh, conferences where they, you have people that can actually do things that can help you get your business going, things like that, uh, there aren't a lot of people that look like us. You know, so I end up feeling like a fish out of water. Or you go to spaces where, you know, everybody's struggling and, and it's hard to build anything when everybody's struggling. And so when you go to places where uh, everybody's got a little bit going and it's only a matter of making the right connections where you've got the interdependence then you find tremendous value being added. Um, and, and just, uh, and I'll say this you know, to you, I haven't said, I even said this to you, Dr. Frazier, but just from our conversations, when you and I had reconnected and started speaking more again, um, you know, the, the people, I, I ate dinner with Wendy Muhammad uh, not too long ago. You know, I've, yeah. I've, the, the other, a lot of other individuals that I've met at that conference, I've reconnected with them and it's added a lot of value. I've said, oh, well, we can work with this person. This, oh, this person would be great to work with. Uh, and, and we, you know, because it's great when you meet people where you think the same way, uh, you're, 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 you're kind of on the same page, you're, you're playing the same game, uh, you're, you're operating by the same code. And so that's why I recommend to you guys that you go to uh, powernetworkingconference.com and uh, really give this conference serious consideration. Uh, a lot of you, I know for a fact, went to uh, some university, you know, University of Iowa or something and spent, you know, 50, 80, $100,000, uh, you know, going to college. And that's fine. But that there's no university I've ever attended that gave me the value in my life that attending just one FraserNet conference did. And, and I, I say that from the bottom of my heart. I vouch for this. I, I hope you guys will take a look. Also, the email address for Dr. Frazier is gfraser at frasernet.com. And that's spelled F-R-A-S-E-R, F-R-A-S-C-S-E-R. -S -S uh, so it's uh, gfraser at frasernet.com if you'd like to be a member of Fraser Nation and also powernetworkingconference.com. Uh, the conference is July 8th through the 11th. Uh, feel free to go take a look. Uh, and also, uh, before you guys go, hit the thumbs up button, share button, subscribe button. Uh, Dr. Frazier will be joining us at the All Black National Convention. Uh, with, mm -hmm. did you, did you, uh, you all made that deal. That's 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 a done deal. That's a done deal. No okay. question. All right. Excellent. So he will be with us at the All Black National Convention as well. You guys have seen up close uh, what value he adds. Uh, that's why he's going to be one of our, our featured speakers. Uh, if you want to come to the convention, which is in Houston, please visit allblacknationalconvention.com. That's allblacknationalconvention.com. And last but not least, don't forget Friday, Julian Gordon, uh, Stanford University graduate, real estate expert, is going to do um, a free masterclass for you guys online on how to how to invest in real estate by multifamily properties. If you'd like to join that, go to theemancipationequation.com, T-H-E, that's theemancipationequation.com. So you got a lot of places you can go. Everything that you need is right here in your community. You've got people like Dr. Frazier and Frazier Nation. Uh, you've got, you know, what we do in the Black Business School. I mean, be, between all these resources and all these people that are doing things for you, I want you to just kind of understand that we as, as Black people have what we need right here in our space. And so uh, just just give Blackness a try. Give your people a try, and I, and you're going to get better results that way. So I want to say thank you, Dr. Frazier, uh, for your time. It is always an honor and a pleasure, and it's, it's, it's really great talking to you again, brother. I appreciate you, man. Um, I'm really looking forward. Uh, uh, that's September 29th, right? Uh, September yeah. 29th is the, yes. yeah, so, the All Black. Right, 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 right. And the title of my talk is going to be Moving from Broke and Broken to Leveraging the Four Pillars for the Intergenerational Transfer of Wealth. Hold on, a new day and a new way is coming all, all right. right long title uh there's a speech right in there so uh join us it's going to be awesome and it's, it'll be good to be with you one, one more time yes absolutely it, i i can't wait so hope, hopefully you guys will join us uh you won't regret it it's you know it, um you 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 see it every you, you see the value here and uh, i just want you to invest your lives in in what's going on in your community because right now you're in the middle of a revolution whether you guys know it or not so uh, thanks again, Dr. Frazier, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next month. Can, can I say one thing? One thing. Well, I just want to close with a resolution. I want all the brothers and sisters who are watching to have a new resolution for the year, for the balance of the year, and for, for from now on. It's the same resolution I'm adopting. I no longer will debate with Black people that Harriet Tubman would have shot. 
<laughs> there you go. Did you guys catch that? <laughs> Say something in the chat if you're going to commit to that re resolution. I would <laughs> debate with black people that Harriet Tubman would have shot. Now, you ain't got to shoot them, but just shoot them down and don't have that conversation. You know, I, I got to take that resolution. Because I, I debate with with, with, with with it's all the time, and I my resolution had been Dr. Frazier that I said in 2019, y'all not gonna see me out here fighting with no black black folks, <laughs> fight with no black folks in 2019. But I like that resolution. <laughs> so when you get the commitment from me, I hope that you guys will make the same commitment because that is right on point. Thank you, right. yes, sir. Love you, man. <laughs> Keep doing God's work. Yeah, same to you, my brother. Take All care right. of yourself. See you right. Have a wonderful day, guys. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>